Uh, there's nothing like watching one of those feel-good family sitcoms of the 80s. Or, well, sometimes they're feel-good. That is unless you stumble across not just a very special episode, but the peak very special episode. The very special episode to end all very special episodes. Punky Brewster was a sitcom that ran for four seasons from 1984 to 1988, being popular enough to even have its own animated series from 85 to 86. The series starred Soleil Moonfry as Penelope Punky Brewster, who along with her dog Brandon, is adopted by older gentleman Henry, played by George Gaines. It was one of the many entries into the feel-good orphan sitcom craze in the 80s that included different strokes and Webster. In the 80s, we loved synthesizers, shoulder pads, and orphans. But it wasn't like the show didn't tackle some serious issues through the eyes of a lighthearted sitcom. Season 2 alone had episodes on cheating and bullying, but it was the Season 2 finale episode that topped all of that by having an entire episode revolve around the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. The episode aired on March 9, 1986, nearly a month and a half after the Challenger explosion on January 28th, which killed all seven crew members on board. While it's easy to be over 30 years removed from this episode's premiere and scoff at the idea that this episode would happen, putting yourself in the mind of the writers and the producers at the time, it's then easy to connect the dots to see how this episode came into play. One of the crew members on board the Challenger was history teacher Krista McAuliffe, and the shuttle launch was shown in many schools where students all watched the disaster happen live. Knowing this, the episode was put into production as a means to have its younger viewers identify with Punky, who herself was having to deal with her emotions of watching the event in school. But the tone of the episode is jarring. <laughs> Hell, the episode itself is called Accidents Happen, which is like finding out there's a Family Matters episode about 9-11 called Did I Do That? And just because we're dealing with a serious issue... Maybe the world is blind. ...doesn't mean we still can't have the happy titles. Yeah, sure, we're all sad, but let's skip down the street and go to a Cubs game while listening to some Gary Portnoy. Ixnay on the ift lay off the ound gray. You better believe this starts with a laugh track and the dog listening to headphones. And this scene is taking place after the explosion. Dear Diary, dear diary, a few weeks ago, something happened that made me real sad. I mean, not sad enough to skip out on some grammar gags, but still sad. So what made her sad? Did she lose her swatch watch or something? What made me so sad was that the space shuttle blew up. <laughs> and with that, the studio audience is now like, <laughs> Well, again, the episode was certainly a noble effort, but... Well, maybe I should start from the beginning. A few days. It has so many sitcom tropes in a real-life disaster episode. This would be like if an episode of Full House went about business as usual to deal with the Oklahoma City bombing. Now it's a few days prior to the explosion, and she's excited about career day at her school, where Henry wants her to be a photographer. You know, Punky, there are a lot of children in this world who would jump at the chance to take over a thriving business. Uh, Henry, are you drunk again? This is a good reminder that disaster can still strike in a universe where dogs can listen to headphones and do card tricks. Brandon, would you be interested in photography? <laughs> <laughs> In a few days, people will be dead! <laughs> At career day, it looks like everyone wants the same career of running a costume shop. They seem so into this. I've wanted to be an architect ever since last night at 10.30, but I still couldn't come up with an occupation. <laughs> the thing was easier to deal with than these damn kids. One kid wants to be Rambo because hell yes, we all watched Rambo movies in grade school. I had the toys. He was Rocky too? And three, and four. Rambo and Rocky? That guy can play anything. <laughs> oh, come on. No love for the Italian stallion? It starts getting a little uncomfortable when one of them wants to be Vanna White. When you wake up in this brand new four-poster bed, buy Sleepaway. <laughs> then Mr. Fulton was fired and went to prison. 
Now let's all point and laugh, children. These careers are ridiculous. Punky wants to be an astronaut like Buzz Aldrin and Sally Ride, or she just wants to do sitcom dog humor. When the disaster happens, I sure hope we get a reaction shot of the dog looking confused and going, Arr! The launch is especially important to Mr. Fulton, as there's going to be a teacher on board. I'm going to bring my television, and we can all watch the launch together. Would you like that? Yeah! <laughs> Don't like this foreshadowing. Don't like this foreshadowing one bit. Surprisingly, they don't show the classroom watching the explosion. It simply just cuts to Punky being sent home. What's the matter? We were watching the space shuttle take off, and... Yes? How do you not know about this already, Henry? Turn on the TV! What? No dog humor? It exploded. Punky Brewster will be right back after these messages. What can you say about a universe where a disaster could happen that would potentially cause a live studio audience to go, Whoa! -oh! We'll return after these announcements. You gotta love whenever sitcoms come back from a commercial break and they have to briefly sum up what just happened, even if, in this case, everyone already knows. The shuttle exploded? Are you sure? No, she's just kidding. It's a new game she likes to play. Plus, I think Brandon may have been turned into a statue. So after we've gotten a lot of jokes out of the way, this scene actually works. Henry gets Punky to talk about what she saw, and she tearfully explains it, and the scene plays out with absolutely no laugh track. I don't know, honey. It's hard to understand. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Good on them for resisting the urge to title drop the episode in the middle of that. Even the next scene kinda works, where Mr. Fulton gets the kids to talk about their feelings. And while there's still no laugh track here, this happens. I kept hoping they'd go to a commercial. When they came back, the astronauts would be saved by Mr. T. Well, that would be a real shark jumping moment for the news. Thanks, 1986! Mr. Fulton explains that despite what happened, he would still go into space if given the chance, and Punky even wants it to be her dream still, despite getting a lot of flack from the other kids who now want nothing to do with space. Punky, you're crazy. You sure are. Careful there, show. You're getting too serious. Let's get that laugh track back in here. And boy, does it come back with a vengeance. This is literally the next scene. <laughs> Why don't you use a dummy? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's in a dress. Oh, come on, Henry. Go up into space, you big girl. Oh no, bad timing. Mr. Fulton brings THE Buzz Aldrin in to talk to Punky. Never mind asking him to talk to the entire class. Really, only Punky needs a good, inspirational talking to. Uh, Henry, it's me, Mike. Listen, I brought somebody in. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Henry, dress! Whew, I'm so over that Challenger stuff now. Buzz just happened to be in town giving a lecture, so of course he'll come over to a stranger's apartment. Look, George, we've got the legendary Buzz Aldrin for a cameo about this super tragic event that just happened. Could you be wearing a dress for it? If I want to see something like this, I'll just watch my favorite episode of Monty Python, The Buzz Aldrin Show. Punky still does want to be an astronaut, she's just upset her friends think she's crazy. So shouldn't it be the other students who are hearing this speech? And where the hell are their free t-shirts? Young astronauts? Yes, it's an organization for children. Obviously foreshadowing the movie Space Camp. The Young Astronaut Space Program is so serious that even the dog gets an application. Anyway, Diary, that's how Buzz Aldrin showed up to sell me on a youth space program. If is a word. Smack in the middle of life. Isn't that deep? No, not really. I'm sure this will leave us with words of wisdom like every special episode. Hang loose and don't take any wooden nickels. Wow, how I wish Reagan incorporated that line into his speech. Our hopes and our journeys continue, so hang loose and don't take any wooden nickels. The episode ends with Punky looking up at the sky and declaring that one day she and Brandon will both go up into the stars. 
Just not on NBC, because not only was this the season finale, but it was also the end of its series run on NBC. The remaining two seasons would premiere in syndication. I guess the network executives said to themselves, I don't think we can top this episode, so why bother trying? The episode's heart's in the right place, especially in how it tries to get a dialogue going between the kids and their teacher about what they witnessed on television. And it certainly wants kids to still be interested in the space program. And it's not like other sitcoms haven't touched on tragedies before. Friends had nods to 9-11 with Joey's FDNY shirt, and Sex and the City ended an episode with a shot of the towers in a snow globe. But whereas those tributes were a lot more subtle, this one is the focal point point of the episode, and trying to mix that with its family sitcom cheeseball humor and cliches is awkward, to say the least. It would be like if Curly Sue ended with our star giving a speech about the Persian Gulf War. The episode was written by series creator David Ducklin, who was a writer and producer on The Jeffersons and Laverne and Shirley, and the creator of Silver Spoons. He's also attached to what appears to be an upcoming Punky Brewster reboot. Excellent. I'm crossing my fingers for the very special episode where Punky's kids give their thoughts about mass shootings. Otherwise, will the reboot really be worth it? 